Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And today I'm taking you to Yale Town, Vancouver. So first of all, I'm taking the little shuttle bus from Science World. It's about 10 to 15 minute bus ride. And here's Chinatown, the Heritage Chinese Buildings. And here, here we are in Yale Town, Vancouver. And this is the lunch place that I used to come very often when I worked around here as a daycare teacher. Here's my Pad Thai noodle lunch. I really like the crispy salad on top. After lunch, I'm taking a walk around the quayside. It's a beautiful sunny day, very warm. A lot of people around here. Almost nobody is wearing a mask. But I am wearing a mask just to stay safe at all times. And here's someone selling coffee on a bike. Very interesting concept. There are lots of cherry blossoms around the seawall walkway. Love the shining water and all the boats. It's a very peaceful place despite all these glassy apartment buildings. It's a little busy but not chaotic place. Very peaceful. And here I am at the Starbucks by the metro station. So I've been here a number of times when I worked as a daycare and preschool teacher. And the interior of this place is very interesting. With bricks, very old fashioned. And it's quite busy right now. And the seating area is very limited. After a while, it's quieter. So I'm sitting down here in front of the counter. I got a cup of uh, cafe latte and I'm ready to do a sketch of the interior. So when we're sitting inside or outside, sitting anywhere, we have a boat, um, a view of both 180 degrees to 200 degrees, maybe more. So we have to be really selective. So right now I'm only able to include about 90 degrees view in front of me and I decided to include this window with bright sunshine coming in and now I'm adding a lady she just came in and waiting for her coffee order and she's standing here for a little bit longer than I expected about a minute or two so I'm just quickly summarizing her body gesture Now I am keep adding the window frames. So I see small squares and tall rectangles and adding some inner uh, three-dimensional structure inside the frame. And now I'm just adding this um, security camera hanging up there. Starting to add the rows of bricks, beginning with the parallel horizontal lines and a little bit of uh, short vertical lines here and there. Yeah, drawing very quickly because this is a pretty um, typical and common pattern of bricks. So instead of copying every single piece of brick, I'm just kind of summarizing the brick pattern. So again, when drawing things like this, we don't have to be the same because no one's gonna check the placement of every brick. So all we need to do is to work faster and just uh, capture the essence of this pattern and make it pretty convincing. And add a little bit of perspective line over there. There's a little counter there to uh, self-serve cream and sugar. I'm just um, switching to my Unipen brush pen. As you can see, it can make thicker lines because I'm now I'm drawing these bars uh, with plastic covering, kind of protecting the baristas from all of these people in front of them. So as you can see, these lines look very simple, but they're following the rules of perspective. So the lines on the top and bottom, they're trying to merge somewhere on a vanishing point outside the window. And the three vertical bars, the spaces between them are affected by perspective. Now I'm starting to draw another lady coming in starting with her head, her hoodie, and then her handbag, her legs crossing, very interesting gesture, and her arm. 
adding some more details for her shoes. And yeah, I think she stayed longer than I expected. So I was able to capture her gesture more accurately. And now is the detail work for the left side. Um, now I'm just drawing these takeout paper, paper bags. There are lots of them. A lot of people are ordering takeouts. So I'm switching back and forth between my Unipen brush pen and 0.8 fine liner. As you can see, I'm using the brush pen to make these quick, thicker lines of the metallic bars, uh, making up the shelves, the hanging shelves from the ceiling, and also the frames advertising the drinks. So when we're sketching um, a scenery, we don't have to use the same fine liner pen all the time. We can switch between two, maybe three if you want to. So we create different kind of line thicknesses just to make a scenery more interesting with different kinds of line weight, especially for an urban scenery like this with lots of uh, not so interesting vertical and horizontal lines. So now I'm just uh, drawing the shelves and the frames, some more metallic bars around on the counter and the napkin boxes, the boxes containing the coffee lids, straws, and other utensils. Just seeing those things in very simple rectangular shapes, circular shapes. Because the more that we think what we need to draw, the more stressful it is. So we really have to let go of all preconceptions and just focus on the pure and simple experience of seeing in simple geometric shapes. And now I'm just being playful, just adding these squiggly words and the pictures inside the frames showing the uh, signature drinks. And keep building on the details like the straws here. Yeah, just in very thin little shapes and some other stuff. And now I'm ready to draw this barista. I really want to put her right over here because the right side of this picture is looking pretty empty and needs some, some of these baristas to make it more lively. That's her in the black mask. And Okay, so now I am adding these packages of coffee on the shelf. Again, those are very simple rectangular shapes in repetition. And some more uh, barista's tools in the back. Finishing the window frames on the very back, adding a little bit of accentuation using thicker lines. Okay, so now I am adding more wall structures and details of the bricks behind these black bars. Again, simple parallel lines and little vertical lines to show the brick pattern. Now I'm adding another brista, her back facing me because I think she was working on something else in the back. Okay, now this sketch is looking more interesting with these human figures and adding some more uh, coffee machines and boxes. And again, shading in some area so there's more contrast and interest. Just keep adding more of these bars. There are lots of bars in the back. And before that, I want to add in another brista just to make the right side less empty and more interesting. Okay, and behind, in between these two barbistas behind, I see some colorful liquids with black labels in front of them. Just, I'm just gonna do those um, uh, containers later. Now I wanna finish the brick structures behind all of these black bars, and this part really takes patience a lot of repetitions of parallel lines and short little vertical lines. So just working with one part after another. So these black bars are like um, spaces of different sizes. I'm dealing with one space at a time and then moving on. 
Yeah, a lot of details to see other than the bricks. There's another window there, very small. And another window, it looks very narrow. And some more parallel lines. Sure, unlong, skip around the frames. And these short little vertical lines. Drawing very quickly because I'm not copying, just kind of summarizing the pattern. Okay, so now I'm just adding the rows of um, wooden floor and the vertical lines of the wooden planks making up the counter. As you can see, I'm, le I'm leaving a little space on the uh, lower right corner. I want this scenery to look more flexible because there's way too many um, straight lines. Okay, and I'm just writing the title, Starbucks at Yale Town. And the time that I did this from two to three in the afternoon and a little note and adding some final details of the bricks and then drawing these cute little jugs on the shelf. I think these are concentrations of some specific drinks. And now I'm just using very loose and gentle lines to draw um, the building on the other side of the street. It doesn't need to be specific because um, I want to leave most of the, uh, the window frames, the inside, light, not competing with the interior details. And here is the look of my finished line work. It took me 30 minutes to finish. Okay, so now it's time to add watercolors to spice up this scenery. And so I'm just using clear water by squeezing my water brush to wet the areas that I'm about to paint the first layer on. So pretty much the counter area and the brick wall behind. And as always, the first layer, I always like to do the lightest tone. So now I'm adding on some, a mix of lemon yellow and medium yellow. This is the color of the wooden counter. Again, mixing more or less yellow ochre sometimes, or maybe a little bit of light brown, just to make this flat surface more dynamic and attractive. And now I'm punching on some orange browns by mix orange with brown or burnt sienna. Just use very quick little brush strokes to create these interesting marks on the little uh, rectangle shapes. Again, I think this is the lightest tone of the bricks that I see. There are several different tones of oranges, browns, and dark browns for these bricks. And I'm beginning with the lightest tone, this orange brown. Very loosely, because at the same time, I also want it to shine a little bit, rather than flat, solid color. So as you can see, even though I'm using a very limited color, just a mix of orange and brown, and sometimes a little bit less or more water. Every single brush stroke is actually a different tone of um, orange brown. And that's one of the uh, things that we can do with watercolors. We don't have to use that many colors, but we can control the amount of water that we mix into the paint pigment to create a variety of different tones. Okay, so now I'm wetting the ground area and adding a super watery layer of lemon yellow to show the sunshine coming in. Now I'm just adding this black for the flooring that's in shade and leaving the little two rectangular shapes to show the sunshine patches right there. Now there's more dramatic contrast here and same for the base of the counter. Yeah, so I just grab some black mixing black with a little bit of a dark brown or raw umber. Yep. Just to give more solid colors for this um, sketch because right now I have a lot of warm colors like the yellows and orange browns. And using the same leftover color to paint the counters, a lot of these stuff are kind of in a dark, almost black tone. So this sketch right now, it needs more contrast because it contains still quite a lot of areas of bright tones. Now I'm adding these dark black colors 
for the uh, machines and boxes on the counter here, here and there, and it helps. And I mix in a little bit brown or burnt sienna into the black and just paint these vertical lines, the shade area of the counter away from the sunshine. Now this sketch is gradually looking stronger with these darker colors added in. And as you can see, these darker brown tones are pretty much diluted and you can still see through underneath to see the bright yellow, the vibrant color of the counter. Because they, uh, right now it's actually pretty bright with the sunshine coming in and everything looks bright even though they're in the shade area. And now I am grabbing some darker brown. You can mix ultramarine blue or any dark blue into regular brown or burnt sienna to get darker and darker shade of brown. The more blue you add into the brown, the darker the shade tone is. So here, as you can see, I have a variety of different um, browns now on top of the first layer of light wash of uh, yellow-orange. Yeah, just use very quick choppy brush strokes without over stirring. The pressing of the brush is actually giving a really interesting texture on paper. And this kind of texture may not be uh, done on other kinds of paper. Um, so over the years, I've been trying so many kinds of papers and the same techniques work differently, uh, look differently from paper to paper. So I really like the sharp definition that I can create on this Etcher mixed media sketchbook. And same for this area, using smaller brush strokes. Again, kind of like grabbing my color and changing the color a little bit once a while. Now it's more of um, a brown-orange color here in the middle. Depending on my observation and how I feel. Every single area in an interior actually um, is a bit different. So even though the color scheme may be the same all over the whole interior, but depending on the lighting condition, and when you pay attention, slow down and observe with all of your attention, you're gonna see there are actually a lot of differences in the different areas of a seemingly boring interior. So right now I'm feeling pretty inspired compared to the beginning because um, I felt that this interior is not as interesting and yeah, I didn't really want to do a sketch in here. And now by adding all of these layers of uh, yellow oranges and yellow browns, darker browns, it's very um, self-entertaining. Okay, so now I think I'm ready to paint the nice vintage green colored window frame. So I'm mixing a little bit burnt sienna or brown into the green because um, it's very old. So there's a little bit of a rustic color of green here, pretty much diluted because uh, the sunshine was pretty strong and the window frames are pretty bright. And second layer, wet into wet, a little bit more intense green, like radiant green with less water and more paint pigment. And leaving some streaks from the first layer to show the shine of sunlight. And just paint that green sign at the same time too, just to save time. And now I decided to paint the view outside the window with a super diluted tones. So those are brick buildings on the other side of the street with uh, green window frames as well. I'm painting this in a very watery way because I don't want these colors to compete with the uh, colors of the interior here. So according to the traditional rules of painting, things in the distance can be very blurry and light. It doesn't have to be well defined. And now I'm just grabbing some leftover yellow to paint the takeout bags. Yeah, here and there. And use the leftover green to paint the aprons of the baristas. Very nice uh, pattern there. The green of the baristas aprons and the window frame is really holding the whole sketch together in harmony. And now I'm painting these dark brown coffee packages on the, on the higher shelves. 
and also these dark purple packages as well. Yeah, just adding a lot of colors, limited colors. I don't use that many colors. A lot of leftover colors are used to paint the shade areas and those muted tones all around. I like to use leftover colors to paint those muted things, like those coffee machines and boxes and yeah, and their shirts. And using leftover um, yellow, mix it with a little bit pink to paint the faces. Use black to paint their hairs. I think I think these are Asian baristas. And paint their necks too. Yeah, just again paint the, the view outside the window very loosely, leaving a lot of room for the viewers to imagine. And yeah, this is just a very relaxing part at the final stage. It's painting these um, cups, the imagery of the uh, signature drinks with vibrant yellows and brown. And now I think I am reaching the very last stage of painting, just to add some minor details here and there and to bring more contrast. Yeah, just painting those little uh, jugs with colored drinks. And now I decided to paint the dark stripe on the bottom of the counter because it does look very, very dark. And so painting the bottom, it just really adds more weight for the bottom of this sketch that it needed. And for the edge of the counter too, a bit more contrast with the uh, mix of black and brown. And little tiny details in between those gaps here and there. And now I'm ready to paint this lady's outfit with lots of leftover colors like the blues mixed with pink purples. And yeah, I remember she was wearing blue jeans. So I just grabbed some cobalt blue. Her bag was black, I think. And leaving a little stripe of white there to show the shine of leather. Yeah, I think that her bag was a mix of black with brown, dark leather. And her, her leg in the back is actually darker than her leg in the front, just to show more dimension for her body. And these two ladies, I'm painting their hairs brown. And now I think I'm going to paint the lady on the very left side waiting for her, for her coffee. I don't remember what she was wearing, but I decided to, to use this uh, lime green for the base color and the darker tone of green, like radiant green, to paint the medium tones. Because a lot of colors in this interior scenery contains warm colors, so I decided to use this fresh minty color to paint her jacket. and the leftover colors to paint her pants and her uh, her bag, her shoulder bag. And yeah, nice and loose. Yeah, and because these two figures are in the foreground, I'd like to add more uh, intense colors and contrast. And for her hair too, here and there around, especially for the hair, a little bit more contrast around the back. Use mix of black and brown, very teeny tiny little brush strokes, almost invisible. So this is in the final stage that I like it. use very very tiny little brush strokes to do the polish. Yeah, and for inside the frames too, there's a little bit of shade. And I think that's it. I'm gonna call it done. Here's the look of my finished sketch. The painting took me 30 minutes, so in total, it took me one hour to complete this sketch. And here is a sneak peek of my setup in the cafe. So I have a gooseneck tripod clamped to the edge of the table. So it's time to go home. I'm actually very surprised that in this area that almost nobody is wearing a mask. So yeah, I have to be pretty cautious. Now I want to go home.
and here I am on another line of the metro or sky train on the way home. I just love seeing the blue mountains and the clouds around the horizon. It's just a very soothing experience of seeing. And also brings me back memories of the days when I worked as a preschool teacher. And here is the Fraser River. Yeah, it really brings back memories of the days, of the evenings after work, that when I take the metro back home. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon next time. Have a great day, everyone.